percent and the act in the active treatment group, in other words, the omega-3 fish oils, and did not change in the placebo group. That's mm-hmm. a 51% improvement. Get that. Just with the fish oils. All right? The omega-3 fatty acids found in fish oil, EPA and DHA, was this their comment, have anti-inflammatory activity and have been used with success in the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis and other autoimmune diseases. The results of the present study indicate that these fatty acids are also beneficial for patients with SLE, systemic lupus erythematosus, and uh, Anrum Dis 2008. That's a, anyway, it's the way they, the, the, it was reported in that journal. American Rheumatology Disease. Did you, okay. Or rheumatic Disease, yes. And yes, but okay. that's a 51%. Now, if they, now just wait. On this principle here, why was I then told I don't no longer have that, rup- that, that lupus that was in there 12 years ago that mm-hmm. was so high mm-hmm. and had uh, some of the, a lot of those crippling symptoms? This runs in my family. Now, why? Because taking the, the wonderful super pure omega-3, you've got to be sure when you take it, because when you get the super pure omega-3, you're getting pharmaceutical grade, molecularly distilled, the top uh, GMO practices, and also certified free of mercury, lead, PCBs and any other contaminants from the seed. That's the important thing right there, high potency. And you do that and you add the, um, the pain power. You add those enzymes to, to eat up and just uh, eliminate those inflammatory compounds. What a great combination. The reasons that I, when being examined again, didn't have any trace Beautiful. of what I once had. So that's real exciting, don't you think? And you are taking back your health. Taking it back. Amen, baby. Yes. There's a lot of noise recently about uh, a statin drug that has been hailed as cutting heart disease by 50% and cutting heart attacks by 50%. But let's look at the, what the information really shows. The press jumps on, the, on information like that and blows it way out of proportion. And uh, it's out of proportion to begin with because it isn't true, all right? And I'll give you s- three different doctors' opinions on the subject. Um, this may take a few minutes, so please listen up. The product is called Pres- Crestor, Crestor, a cholesterol-lowering statin drug, which, according to the New England Journal of Medicine, reduced the incidence of major cardiovascular events. Of course, not everyone has the same definition of significant. According to the Associated Press, the research is being hailed as a watershed event in heart disease prevention. And yet, the study suggests that if 120 people with low cholesterol take Crestor, for two years, only one heart attack or one stroke or one death will be prevented over that two-year period. That doesn't sound like it's cutting heart disease by 50%. Those 120 theoretical customers will each spend more than $1,200 per year on Crestor, so it's sort of like playing a very expensive lottery with no way to find out if you're the one and the only one, the only winner. You have to take that on faith. And in this case, your faith would be based on a single study sponsored for and paid by AstraZeneca, the maker of Crestor. Ah, but these guys at AstraZeneca didn't stop there. Of the 14 researchers who conducted the study, 10 of those researchers have received either consulting fees or been on the payroll of AstraZeneca. Oh, this is uh, not a specialist interest group then? They, they have no special interest in oh, how, no. how to tell you about this outcome? These are purely they, objective scientists. Pretty ob- and, and, yeah. and the money that they get from, from the manufacturer oh, of this, that's that doesn't make them you know, suppress any kind of information mm, about no. all the rise in cancer and all the other things that we are learned about Crestor mm-hmm. and other... Okay. Oh, no. my, okay. So but you, they're completely you, impartial. Free impartial. of any conflict. How so clean, ever, yeah. how good. Mm-hmm. The Crestor intervention period was designed to last for five years, but independent monitors, whoever they were, quote-unquote, independent monitors, stopped the study after two years, not even quite two years, because, quote, those taking Crestor were faring better than the others, unquote. Okay, but they weren't faring that much better. Why not let the study continue so we can judge Crestor's true long-range effects? Could a healthy fear of side effects have something to do with the cancellation? Amid all the chirpy, optimistic talk of Crestor reducing heart risks, far less attention was given to this result. New cases of diabetes, 
and new cases of elevated blood sugar levels were markedly higher in the Crestor group compared to placebo. Oh, let's stop on that one. Mm -hmm. uh, new cases of diabetes, and it's actually dramatic, the numbers of new, of new cases yeah. of diabetes were much higher on those taking this drug. That's, right. That's another killing illness. Is not, Absolutely. Okay? And uh, it was much higher on this taking uh, mm -hmm. on taking this drug. What else did you say was higher taking the drug? Uh, the, the diabetes, and uh, if you didn't get diabetes, you had elevated blood sugar levels were markedly higher. And elevated okay. blood sugar levels can lead to a host of other very serious conditions, including kidney failure, mm -hmm. all right? On top of that, Crestor has a history of other serious side effects. In 2004, that's only four years ago, so it takes a while to filter down to the, to the uh, practitioners here. Dr. Sidney Wolf, MD, Director of Public Citizens Health Research Group, sent a letter to the Food and Drug Administration requesting that the, the drug Crestor be taken off the market. Dr. Wolf wrote, we base our opposition to the approval of this drug on its unique kidney toxicity factor and on the higher rate of life-threatening rhabdomyolysis, destruction of muscle tissue, that had been seen with other statins in pre-approval clinical trials. And as of August 26, 2004, there had been uh, many U.S. reports of rhabdomyolysis among patients taking Crestor in less than the first full year of its availability in this, in this uh, country. And remember that with rhabdomyolysis, this muscle breakdown, this destruction of muscle <coughs> tissue, you get kidney failure. The kidneys get completely overwhelmed with trying to deal with all this broken down muscle tissue. That is a very potentially fatal condition when and the muscles break down and liver failure because the liver is breaking down before the muscles do. And heart failure because right. the heart is a muscle. The heart is a muscle. And it's been known to to uh, the, the taking statin drugs enlarges the heart, causes cardiomyopathy. Because of robbing okay. the heart of coenzyme Q10. That's right. Now, that's one doctor, okay? Well, yes, I know. Go right. right ahead. Okay. Go right ahead. And this is another doctor talking about uh, Crestor, um, anti-inflammatory. He says, if you take Crestor, the cause of oh, this is incredible. If you're taking statin drugs and you're also taking... Uh, painkillers, the drug indomethacin, carry the greatest risk. If you take it, you're three times as likely to go to the hospital for heart failure as those not taking the drug. Most patients took the drugs for osteoarthritis pain. But the cause, the study showed very clearly what I've said for years, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory anti drugs are poison. They cause heart attacks. They cause bleeding, they cause erectile dysfunction, they cause joint destruction, and now they also cause heart failure. Now, if you increase your risk of heart failure significantly, if you take statin drugs to lower your cholesterol and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs for pain. So taking the Crestor with anti-inflammatory drugs increases your risk of, of heart attack and death significantly. So now all the benefits from taking Crestor are suddenly being washed away. It's not the wonderful drug everybody thinks it is. Your best line of defense, says the doctor, is to take coenzyme Q10 there daily. There you go. If you take a painkiller also, you should increase that dose of coenzyme Q10 dramatically. But of course, I think you should completely avoid both the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory anti drugs and Crestor and all the other statin drugs. There are much better ways to beat high cholesterol and chronic pain. And Th I'm glad that you said this because I wanted to give a commentary from another f medical doctor on what you're saying right, and what go you're ahead. talking about. And uh, you, okay, and this one is Sherry Rogers, medical doctor, and uh, be interviewed by Rosemary Williams, M.A. The, this is Sherry Rogers. The commonly prescribed statin drugs accelerate senility, depression, amnesia, nerve, heart, and muscle damage, even suicide. Statin drugs create a deficiency of coenzyme Q10, a major factor in congestive heart failure, which kills more Americans annually than cancer. Statin drugs interfere with nutrients that are cancer protective. She lists uh, the name of one, atro atrom uh, atromid or clofibrate, which, um, excuse me, atromid. which was used for decades as a cholesterol-lowering drug is so highly carcinogenic, that's cancer-causing, that is often used to quickly induce cancer in laboratory animals. Wow. 